again. Um, this is the City and County of Honolulu Source Reduction Working Group meeting number four. Today, our meeting will be done both in person and virtually through the MS Teams link that was provided in the agenda. You all should know me by now. My name is Lindsay Lopez and I'll be the main facilitator for this meeting. And as you can see, I'm attending virtually today. I'm joined by my two colleagues in person, uh, John Padre and Emily Stone. And then I also have Eunice Chan who's joining me virtually as well. So. Um, welcome everybody and thanks for attending. Uh, the date is December 4th, 2023. Uh, please put your phones and microphones on silent until uh, speaking. Uh, for those in the room, the restrooms are located down the hall and to the right, and we are recording this meeting for note keeping purposes. I call this meeting to order. Emily, could you please do roll call? Mike O'Keefe. Present. Amy Cook. Here. Lene Ichino Tsubo. Here. Nicole Chatterson. Here. Quinn Vita. Here. Amy Brinker. Jessica Liorna. Alan Evans. Here. Lauren Zerbel. Here. And Tina Yamati. Thank you. Um, so it looks like we do have a quorum and I do want to I know that Lene has to step away for a moment today, so um, I would like to just take a moment and understand if there are others that have times that they uh, must leave by or if um, you all are otherwise here from one to, to four. So if you could put maybe that in the chat and or raise your hand in the room and we can or just say it out as well. Does anyone have anything that we need to work around besides Lene? I was able to resolve my last conflict, so I'm I'm OK. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. A lot of work on your part. I appreciate you doing that. Um, another one other announcement is that Jess Leorna is no longer with BIA Hawaii, and so we will be um, working with BIA Hawaii to see if they have uh, another person they would like to have in her re as her replacement for you know um, participation in meeting five and commentary on the the final report. And if that is the case, um, we will uh, issue a replacement letter and do the formal process there. So just wanted to alert you all to the fact that the working group might s slightly change, but um, Jess is no longer um, with BIA Hawaii. So. Here is a quick look at our agenda today. Um, we have a lot of items to cover again. Uh, there are two items today that have actionable elements, and for those items, we will invite public uh, oral testimony when we get to those um, items. Each oral testimony will have a two minute time limit. So we'll start with our welcome. We are going to next move into the approval of the minutes from meeting number three. Uh, then our big topic of the day is discussion of the information that was presented at meeting number three. This is the opportunity to hear from all of you. Uh, many of you are on uh, the permitted interaction groups and um, it's a chance to further discuss the considerations. And then we will um, be moving on to item five where we get to finalize any recommendations that we're putting into the report. And then we'll move on to scheduling and adjourn the meeting. So let's move on to the approval of the minutes. Um, so again, this one has both an informational element and an actionable element. The meeting minutes were posted in the meeting packet for meeting number three at the project website. Um, in this agenda item, we'd like to explore if you all have any changes uh, to the notes, and then if not, we can approve those meeting minutes. So first, I'm going to open it up to public 
testimony. Um, and again, remember each person gets two minutes. Has anyone in the room signed up to testify for this item, Emily? No. Is there anyone in the room that has not registered that would like to testify? No? No one in the room. OK, great. Um, Eunice, is there anyone from the video conference that has registered to testify for this item? Um, no, and um, if, OK, yeah. OK, and there's no one that's put a chat, it looks like, either. Okay. Then or Razor. We can move right on into the members discussion then. Um, you all have had an opportunity to see these minutes and I want to ask if there's any questions or comments or modifications that need to be made to the minutes that you reviewed. Do you have any members have comments, questions or modifications? I don't see any in the room nor online. Can I get a member to make a motion for approval of meeting number three minutes then? I've moved to approve the meeting number three uh, minutes. Can I get a second? Second. All members in favor of approving the minutes from the meeting three say aye and or raise your hand on the online meeting. Aye. Aye. Emily, were you able to see those that voted yes? Could you say their names out loud for the virtual attendance? Yes. Both Lene and Le yeah. Nicole and Haley. Okay. Thank you. Right. Person said I. Excellent. Please note uh, SRWG meeting number three minutes have been approved. So we can now move on to the fun part. This is the discussion of sure. information presented at meeting number three. And this one is um, one where we will all just be talking a little bit first. Um, however, following this action item is is the, another one where we will have the opportunity for public testimony. Nicole, I see your hand up. Did you have a, a question or a comment still? No? OK. So in SRWG meeting number two, the working group decided to have three permitted interaction groups or PIGs. Um, they were for construction and demolition waste, photovoltaic, panel waste, product packaging, and food waste and organics. After meeting number two, the PIGs met over the course of several sessions, and a summary of those findings and considerations that were prepared through those sessions were shared at source reduction working group meeting number three. Um, today is the opportunity to discuss these ideas with the overall working group and finalize our recommendations. Um, so the goal here is to determine what to include in the report. And as a reminder, this report will be prepared. In, are you not hearing me? Sorry, no, we were just having an issue with um, new people joining the meeting. You can continue. Okay. You're hearing me okay though? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. So the goal of today is to determine um, what to include in the report. And I do want to remind you that report is going to be prepared between this meeting number four and our next meeting number five by the consultant group. And that will be done in collaboration with ENV. The report will summarize the group's findings and source reduction recommendations. And then at meeting five, the source reduction working group will discuss and finalize the report. I'd like to reiterate that the report is not an ordinance. Um, it's a collection of recommendations 
And some of those recommendations might take on a slightly different form than they came in as considerations. So that's part of our job today is to document how you'd like them changed, if there's additional steps that you need to see in order to feel comfortable putting them as a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And some members hopefully will carry these next steps forward. Um, soon and then other recommendations might take a little bit more work and involvement from other agencies stakeholders and researchers so uh, finalizing the group's recommendations and determining the next steps will be part of today's discussion this shows just kind of a brief process of what we're planning to do today just to give you all uh, an idea of kind of how we're planning to go forward with this so this item that we're on now is agenda item four and source reduction working group members will discuss each of the considerations that were shared at meeting number three. And for each of those considerations, working group members will discuss the consideration as a group. We'll try to get um, any questions you have answered. Hopefully I'm looking forward to uh, some of the PIG members that were a part of each group, you know, speaking up, bringing forth the things that they wanted to make sure that the rest of the group heard. Uh, this is the time to provide feedback. And then following this discussion, the source reduction working group members will perform just a quick vote. Uh, a vote of yes is to have that some version of this consideration included as a recommendation in the report. And then after all of the dis, uh, considerations have been discussed, we'll finalize recommendations as part of agenda item five. If there are enough votes, which are a majority, are in favor of including a consideration as a recommendation in the SRWG report, um, members will then identify if any changes Oh, could you please put your um, on mute? Thank you. Uh, yeah, OK, thanks. Yeah, OK, bye. If there's enough votes, which would require a majority in favor of including a consideration as a recommendation in the report, then members will identify if any changes need to be made to how the consideration is listed. And then we would move forward to motion to approve that recommendation for inclusion in the report. So there is also going to be an opportunity for public testimony on any of the considerations at the start of an agenda item of agenda item five. So hopefully um, you understand the process, but I'll pause here just a moment. And if you have a question or it's not clear, I'd be happy to answer clarifying questions. Anybody have any? OK, please let me know if you do. So before we jump into the discussions, I just want to take a moment and remind the group of a few important things. So first of all um, is the definition of source reduction that we've been using to guide our discussions. Um, the discussion that you see in the slide here is the definition that was shared at meeting number one and is also on the project website. And I, um, you know, I want to point out a few things here. So I wanted you to remember that this source reduction can be defined as actions that reduce the generation of waste, waste disposal, and waste toxicity. And that's an important element because some of the items that have been proposed, um, you know, may look like they're a little bit more like in the recycling realm than source reduction, but just getting this material out of the disposal waste stream or illegal dumping does reduce toxicity. So it's important to keep in mind those um, types of source reduction. And then secondly, I just wanted to remind us of the charter that we all saw at the start of this um, working group. It lists out the five goals that were stated as part of this group. Um, and I'm going to just read them here for um, make sure everyone can hear them. So the first is to identify potential best approaches to source reduction initiatives. Second is provide recommendations for programs and policies to reduce waste generation. Third is to develop quantifiable targets for source reduction and identify metrics and milestones to track progress. Fourth is to facilitate coalitions between ENV, industry, educational institutions, non-governmental organizations, and communities to discuss and achieve source control reduction. And five, 
by the close of the SRWG, which we're getting very close to, lay the foundations for the potential form formation of a new self-sustaining long-term stakeholder coalition that discusses source reduction needs over time. A successful source reduction program for Oahu will require ongoing discussions and coordination that extends beyond the one year appointed term for this source reduction working group. And as such, at the close of the source reduction working group, members are encouraged to strive towards this goal by maintaining contact and forming their own permanent self-sustaining stakeholder led group. That's quite a mouthful, a lot of goals. I think we've done a, a great job on meeting many of them. Um, and you know, these are something to keep in mind as we discuss the, the considerations and formalize the recommendations for the report. What else that we need to do in order to meet the goals that we set forth at the beginning of this big effort? All right, so let's get things started. Um, so now we'll start working our way through each of the considerations per the process I shared previously and shown on the slide. We're going to be focusing on this left hand side of the graphic where we discuss each one, go over questions, collect feedback, then we perform that quick vote. Things that get enough votes, then we'll move on to the next more um, kind of refinement process in agenda item five. So here are, as a reminder, are the six different CND um, considerations that we discussed. And so we're going to go through each of those and start collecting some feedback. So we'll start with a reminder about what you saw and then we can um, answer some questions and then we'll move to collecting feedback. So this first CND consideration was to seek out funding strategies. And um, the solution was that the city can apply for grants or build partnerships that support and seek grant funding. There are a variety of different grants that are out there right now. The one that's shown here on the right is just one form of some of the grants that are out you know, for utilization. There are some that are specifically um, for um, at public education and outreach. There are some that are for infrastructure, um, but there's many different kinds and um, certainly worthwhile to look into this further. So does anyone have any questions about this consideration? And if you do, please feel free for source reduction working group members, raise your hand and or put your feedback in the chat um, and we'll reach out to you and those in the room you know feel free to speak up if you're a source reduction working group member just have one thought on it thank you lindsay um just like city capacity to write grants i don't know if there's an issue there or if that just comes later to address this uh, capacity need but imagine everyone's busy who does that work, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good point, Quinn. Or Michael Chief just handles all the current requirements. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Lene, I see your hand up. I just had a comment. So sure. um, grants in general are not sustainable. It's usually a one time um, effort or uh, contribution, I guess. So in consideration, I, th I think some of the recommendations or opportunities talk about incentives for contractors to avert waste, discounting recycling tipping fees. So, so in the event that the grants are one time, it should be put towards, say, capital improvements or utilized for uh, one time expenditures rather than trying to uh, change a program to reduce tipping fees. And then when the grant runs out, increase the tipping fees. It, consistency would um, aid in implementation. OK.
Hi, Tina. Thank you for joining. Hi, sorry I'm late. No worries. Had a hard time, had a hard time logging on. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, you haven't missed much. I just wanted to let you know right now we're on agenda item four and we're just getting started where we're going to go through each of the considerations and it's the discussion period with the working group. So it's a moment to capture your feedback on the item and then we'll do a quick vote and then we'll we'll formalize and kind of fine tune what that actually that item looks like um, as represented in the report. So that's what we're doing now when we're on the first one, seek out funding strategies for C&D. Cool. Any other questions or items that people wanted to bring about this one? So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll add a comment since Mike with you and me. Um, and yeah, I totally agree with Anais's comments. Um, I think, you know, as, as a general idea, this is a good thing, seek out funding strategies, but as Lily mentioned, you know, we have to target it at programs that, um, you know, maybe we didn't want to see or we didn't need or want to see um, year in and year out, like, like uh, you know, grants to help us develop a, a plan for a longer term program or you know maybe education and outreach that you know if we, if we got it one year you can get it the next year wouldn't be you know wouldn't be bad wouldn't be like discontinuing the service that we established or something like a 10 fee discount for example um so and you know general comment is you know this is a good strategy um uh yeah and it just kind of depends on on what what the money's used to offer what what you know, what what the city we use the money for and what the money is actually going to help us for. Okay, excellent. Any other feedback on this one? All right, we've got a lot to discuss, so I'm going to move us along here, but I do want to just, this is not like a motion, but it's just a kind of a temperature check on you know how you're feeling about this consideration. So I'm going to ask for if you um, vote yes to include some version of this as a recommendation in the report. And again, we'll get to finalize exactly what that looks like in the next agenda item. So if you vote yes, um, if you could please raise your hand both in person and online, I would appreciate that. That way we can document the number. It looks like three votes in the room. Hands are still coming in. And possibly three online. Is that what you're seeing too, Eunice? Yes. OK, so I'm going to say we got six votes on this one. Excellent. Let's move us along to the next one then. Did this... you say their names out loud for the virtual attendees who voted? Yes, I'm sorry. Um, Renee and um, who else had their hand up? Haley and Nicole. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Item two for the CND considerations is to adopt a diversion ordinance. Um, there are lots of ways these ordinances can be put together and certainly the details would need to be worked out, um, but that is something that we can talk about um, as far as how you want to actually include this as a recommendation. But um, this is the second one. Is there any questions or things that the working group members involved in this or anyone has you know, anything to say about this particular one? Um, so just Lindsay, I, I had emailed you that um, document. It's um, the guide for uh, local government policy around deconstruction and building material reuse. Um, and just wanted to, um, I don't know, just make sure everyone had a access to that because they've done a really good job laying out different 
strategies for uh, for policy. So that's, let me know if I can send that out or anything. Yeah, I think um, so. We can do that a couple of ways. We can send it out to the whole group, and then we can also include maybe a link to it in the in the report if that's something that we move forward with this consideration. It looks um, like I, I see um, Dean, your hand is up and I this is I just wanted to let you know right now, this is just a source reduction working group um, comment period. But in the next agenda item, there will be a chance for public comment and I um, we can answer your question at that time. Lindsay, this is Mike and Ian D. I'll add a comment. Um, uh, this is probably one of my um, one of my um, I support probably this this idea most of any of the other considerations. Um, getting back to what you had mentioned at the start of this meeting, uh, this this I think is more of a source reduction initiative um, than than um, than some of the other options that we discussed. All all good options and ideas and strategies, but um, I think this gets to this gets to our charter um, directly. Uh, I think this has the biggest impact or affecting the biggest capabilities or effect source reduction. Um, there's there's groundwork uh, already established. Um, and uh, you know, with, with Hawaii County um, adopting something similar to this. Um, yeah, this is this is um, yeah, I think this is the truest, maybe the truest source reduction initiative we have in the consideration. So yeah, definitely definitely supportive with us. Okay, thank you. Lene, I see your hand up. Did you have some some feedback on yeah, this? Yeah, I actually had a I had more of a question, I guess. Sure. Um for number three. Um, I know we're talking about number two, but number three seems to be a potential subset of two. Has it been considered that, you know, as part of the solid waste management plan, being that it is talking about uh, reuse as well, include um, discussion about deconstruction in that ordinance and just have it, I guess, treat the um, treat the requirement as a, a more from a whole more holistic standpoint holistic. rather than having two separate ordinances. Anyway, yeah. that, that's just a question or a comment for consideration. Excellent. I will add that here. Any any comments on that within the group about potentially um, combining item two and three? I agree. Um, deconstruction would be, you know, a means a means of diversion. So it makes sense that it could be a subset of that ordinance and diversion ordinance. So yeah, totally. Okay. I, I do have a comment on uh, um, the sound of the planning of the solution is I see the, the identification of license to be smaller. Um, there's currently uh, you have to identify some parcel of what's being solved for the city. I think um, if we do a little more emphasis on all waste modeling, uh, there are waste haulers now that that uh, call commercial trash identifying as residential trash, so maybe a better way of screening that material for those haulers. Of Lindsay, this is Emily. Yes. From Jacob, just making a comment on the way that the considerations were organized. So we decide to separate two and three into two considerations for the sake of um, it's like easier to understand the concepts that like diversion is different from deconstruction. They are very related. Um, so that's the reason why they're on like two separate sides. 
So not to say that um, they're necessarily two different things. Thanks, it's Emily. Like an organization of the slides. Any Is other no... comments on? Sorry. Yeah, Lindsay, just one uh, update and also, I guess, a question. So the state legislature is going to introduce two bills this session, uh, which is related to waste reduction and also one that um, uh, puts a priority on the, with the procurement process with anyone that's promising to divert waste from public works projects. Um, so just not sure if there should be some coordination, like since the ball's already rolling in the statewide thing, that um, maybe just look at that and see what happens. Yeah, that sounds good. Do you have an addition to your comment or? That was it. Lene, did you have uh, more to add or did you? Yeah, I had actually had a, a separate point. Sure. Um, when if if this is uh, the city decides to pursue this and gets into the guidelines, I, I do as far as the portion where we do the outreach education for this. Um, I think there's some information that needs to be shared about what can be recycled and um, some considerations for safely reuse and recycle. You know, for example, um, soil is often reused between different projects and whatnot, and we're finding that contaminated soils are being tracked with it to the new locations. And when they do need to remediate, the site to which they've identified, I mean, they have taken the contaminated soils, additional uh, cleanup or additional volume is usually generated and then we don't actually um, save on reduction or uh, source reduction, we actually create more waste that way. And so if we can, um, we, we, we normally find it from the back end, so if we can the city can help assist on the education on the front end through um, whether this solid waste ma management plan or the um, permitting requirements on, um, you know, demolition, whatever permit they call it. Um, that could also help in minimizing waste generation. OK, great. Thank you. Any others? OK, we can always come back. You can think about it some more. Um, but for now, let's do a quick vote again. Please raise your hand if you would like to move this one forward in some fashion to the next step. I see three hands in the room. And then I see Nicole and Haley's hand online. That's five votes for yes. Lene. Oh, um, and Lene, sorry, six votes. Thank you. All right. Let's move into number three then. This is, we've talked a little bit about it um, already. This one is adopting a deconstruction ordinances or ordinance. And again, this, you know, could be done on its own or in some combination of the diversion ordinance. There are examples in different places of doing this um, many different ways. Um, but I think you all have heard enough about it. So if there's anybody from the group that would like to comment or make some ha have some questions or anything, please let us know. Maybe it's kind of clarifying comment or question before we go any further. Uh, sure. it, it, it kind of gets to it kind of gets to um uh the what was mentioned earlier in, in this meeting about you know what what comes after our fifth meeting like how does this how does the source reduction working group live on but uh, I think you know what we're talking about solutions and a lot of our so far I guess all of the solutions 
have been um, it's been noted that you know it's something that the city and county would would um, you know champion and take on. Um, but I, I think uh, I, I, and I, I think that that would be fine. But I also don't want to like really limit our thinking there. Um, you know, it would be I think it could either be the city, it could be whatever the next evolution of the source reduction working group is, or it could be either one of those some some other entity or something else and it could be it could be it could um be something that is proposed to the state and is um is written into a bill and it's something that um, comes out as a state statute and not just an ordinance um it could be an ordinance it could be a statute it could be policy could be directive it could be any number of things but i just wanted to throw that out there uh, just to just to make the comment that um, you know maybe just to, we try to keep our thinking open on that like it's not just the city I think and, and many times I think it, the city would not maybe even not be the best entity to take some of these initiatives forward but um, yeah it doesn't necessarily have to be the city that that pursues the next step. Okay, that's a great clarifying comment, Mike. Um, I think that if you all move. Our you know vote to move this forward into the report. The, that those are some of the details. The more of that that we can discuss and at least document in the report, the better. Um, so be thinking about kind of your positions on those things as well. Any other comments or feedback on this consideration? No. OK, uh, again, so let's go forward and to a vote of yes for including this in some version in the report. If you vote yes, please raise your hand. I see three hands in the room. I see Haley and Nicole. Oh, Haley <laughs> and Nicole. I'll wait for just a second in case anyone else raises their hand. I actually have a question. So if we. So is the option of combining two and three still on the table? Absolutely. Rather and than I, having. Yes, I would okay. say that would be figured out in the next agenda item, Lene. So if even if you have you know any interest in talking about this one at all further, then we sh you should vote. Yes, on this one, okay. and then we can keep moving forward. Okay. Okay, so then I see three hands Nicole, Lene, and Haley online, and we had three in the room. So that's another six votes. Okay. How's everybody doing? Doing okay? Great. Let's move on to the fourth item. This one is streamlining the permitting process for C&D and concrete waste recyclers. Again, the challenge here is the permitting process is a barrier to setting up new recycling facilities, reuse facilities, um, places to just be able to, you know, collect, process those sort of materials. And, um, the solution would be to have industry stakeholders working with the state to streamline or simplify the process and then also adding this providing online educational materials for interested permittees to make it easier. Nicole, I see your hand up. Do you have a question or a comment? If so, you're on mute and I can't hear you. OK, feel feel free to speak up if if you do want to if you have a comment on this one. Anyone else have comments on item number four for C and D? I'm going to have a comment. Um, I'm going to uh, bring process for C and D. I think uh, I think all recyclers in the 
the benefit from the computerized data process. And then the solution is not fully to work with us today. I think there's a lot of uh, seeing the departments that we work with, I think we can leave as well, but I think a lot of the groups um, So if they, you can get all the same groups from the other, that's a way to streamline the process. So it's a, it's a long process. So Sorry, you cut out a little bit for me. Did you say that you don't think it's um, working with the state to streamline it and that it's city departments that you're? I think, I think, it's, I think it's both. We have to get approvals from the, the city as well for zoning or use the leash, stuff like that. So a lot of times the, the two departmental statements, you know, we're going to talk to each other too much, so we got to turn it to the but streamlining that process, like the right now, there's like a ton to decide for that strand on a few other things, SMA or something like that. Um, and so there's, you know, it would, it would be helpful if the, the cities of Sacramento office and if we, you know, like, hey, there's something that we need to look at, we need to push forward, stuff like that. So rather than it's, it's not just a development, you're not trying to build a house or trying to get permitted to. Take on this material and, and do something with it. You can really use that. Okay, thank you. Any other feedback on this item? I mean, this is this is obviously I think ultimately a good thing um, to do. Um, I would, you know, I I, I plan on supporting this. Provided that, um, you know, the, 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 any effort would be, you know, again, back to my vision comment, the efforts would be focused on source reduction, i.e., um, a process that would create, that would create no waste byproduct, the concrete recycling, for example. I'm not super familiar with it, but I'm pretty sure that you can, you can use. You can completely recycle concrete and, and there's no waste byproduct. But like I just again, this is a good thing, but just to keep us focused on our on our charter. Recycling is obviously a good thing, recycling metals, wood waste is a good thing, but that's kind of a further downstream consideration than what this group is looking at. So I would I would support it to the extent that it's a source reduction initiative. Okay. Thank you, Mike. We can certainly make sure we document that as we fine tune it in the next agenda item. Lene, you have a piece of feedback on this one? Yeah, so to follow up on what was said in the room, I think it was Mike. Um, so if, it, if it's a reuse issue, then a solid waste management permit. I'm just going based on the picture on that slide. Um, so with regards to solid waste permitting, it would not apply if, um, say, a door or a window is being reused. Um, so to go to that comment about source reduction, yeah, then then in that case, um, a permit, a solid waste permit would not be required. Um, and then as, and just a, as an update to this, we are working on um, e-permitting, which is a picture of what you're seeing, so that everything can be done electronically rather than paper, so that in future submissions, everything, your application can be cloned and reutilized that way. So any changes that you've um, had during the, the permitting period just needs to be updated and not reinvented, I guess. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, we are taking steps already to streamline that process. And we recognize a lot of it has to do with education because um, some of the generators are unfamiliar with the um, contaminants associated with certain material types. And um, yes, we recognize that those are where the hiccups are. And so we do need to work on those educational materials. So um, I appreciate those comments. Thank you. Anyone else have anything to say about this one? OK, let's move on to a vote then. Um, those in favor of moving forward with this consideration in some form, we can work out the specifics and the wording, but please raise your hand. Unless, Nicole, is that a question or a vote? 
I'm going to take it as. Oh. Please raise your hand if you would like this when moving forward. Well said, that was a vote. I, th I think I see three hands in the room, and then I see Haley, Nicole, and Lene's hand. That's six votes again. Great. Well, are doing really well. Thank you. Let's move on to number five. This one is establishing transfer station and stockpiling areas for C and D waste. A uh, large limiting factor for diverting C and D waste is lack of space for stockpiling, sorting, and storing materials. And solutions are establishing on-site areas to stockpile and store at potential future CND process facilities or at the landfill and or establishing a network of CND transfer stations around the island to store materials, minimizing hauling fees by locating stations strategically around the island. Um, I do want to mention that a, a, one of the city's other consultants is working on a CND management plan and they might even have recommendations in that for new or current facilities, um, which include processes and operations for stockpiling and sorting CND waste. So just there would certainly need to be an element of coordination on that front. Any questions, comments, or feedback on this one? Lene. Uh, Oh, oh, sorry. I need three sets of eyeballs. That would be helpful. <laughs> the room can go first. Oh, thanks. I was just going to say um, the um, while the transfer station piece is important, we'll see what happens with the pilot project we're about to do. Um, I just wonder too if like there's a need just for um, storage of, of material, um, just warehousing, right, or, or yards. And I know that the um, city of San Francisco does that for folks that are diverting material and has places that they can provide to them, uh, organizations. So um, I mentioned it was just from our standpoint of reuse, if we add more of our housing, we can just maximize the waste reduction. So, so is that is that a, a limiting factor for you, Quinn? Then is just the lack of warehousing capabilities? Yeah, yeah, especially here in Hawaii with the, all the hotel renovations, just massive amounts of material. We just we just get full too quick. Even though we have a 40,000 square foot facility, it's just um, too good to a market. So, of course, we can't afford to just lease other warehouses. So, if the city or state could help with that need, it would be huge. Okay, excellent. Lene. It was more of a question. It says solutions is where stakeholders could. So, we're not. Um, limiting just to this the city or government agency right we're we're looking at um any anyone who has means because i guess my concern would be if there's competing um operations um you know we might have failure all around um so i was just kind of trying to figure out what this actually meant so I think, you know, this is for you all to to formulate and if it makes sense to specify it a certain way, you know, uh, we can certainly modify it so that it looks, you know, it's representative of that. Did you did you have a recommendation on specifically which stakeholders? At this point, I no, I don't have a recommendation. OK. All 
any other questions, comments, feedback on this one? Then just one quick thing. I'm just not sure if stop pile is the right term, at least in terms of the way I think about it. It's more like staging and storage or the development, you know. Um, okay. So actually maybe I'll put that down here. Yeah, so I got I put my hand up. I'm not sure if uh, you can see that. Yes, Dr. Babcock, I, Babcock, I see that I um, was going to address you here shortly. Okay. Um, so I am unclear if we can call upon you right now just because this is the source reduction working group member portion. So I'm thinking if you can hold your comment to the next spot and then we'll have you go along with the rest of the public comment, that would be good. Got it. Sorry, I didn't realize what phase we were in. Thanks. No worries. This is agenda item four. Thank you. Any other working group members have comments on this item? And for those that are here for public comment, I just want to remind you that the next in between item four and five, you will have an opportunity to provide your public testimony. So we'll call upon you then if you're not in the working group. All right, if there's no other comments on this one, let's go ahead and take a vote on um, number five for C&D for establishing transfer station, some sort of storage staging areas for C&D waste. If you would like to see that move forward in some version, please raise your hand. I think I see two hands in the room. Is that what you see, Emily? Or just one? I see. Uh, oh, I'm quitting. Sorry. Could you say that again? How many do you see? Oh. Alan and Quinn. Alan and Quinn. Okay. And then we have three online, Lene, Nicole, and Haley. That's five at the moment. You said, I mean, just for the benefit of the Since you don't inspect things well, I don't know whether or not that's. Can I ask a question, a clarifying question, Lindsay? Please. Um, again, this is, well, this is kind of a the city. Um, again, out there, you know, this is a good thing. Um, I guess I have, and this is maybe a difficult question to answer, but. Um, I mean, I, I I did not raise my hand. Um, I think I think some of this could be um, considered source reduction, like um, like what Quinn mentioned, staging. Um, you know, coming from the staging area. Um, you know, so part of the reason I didn't raise my hand is because I think um, you know it's only only part of this consideration is is maybe source reduction, and I think we need to understand stakeholder involvement a little bit more. So I wasn't clear about that. But also, um, I'm, but maybe the main reason I didn't raise my hand is because I, I, um, I'm just, I'm, my personal um, kind of goal is to kind of keep the, the source reduction working group or however the working group lives on. Um, you know, focus on some some core solutions, which personally I, I feel why in um, diversion and deconstruction. Um, so I get, my question is like how, and again, it's an impossible question to answer, but because I want to focus on these core things, I'm wondering about the, the group or the next iteration of the group's capacity to take these things on. Um, I don't want to overextend itself so that we just focus on what I personally view as like higher value, higher value, higher um, impact strategies. 
Mm -hmm. um, so all those things are kind of why I did raise my hand for five. And, um, I don't know if you or any, even anybody else has comments about about you know the capacity of this of the special nursing group or the next iteration taking taking you know multiple things on as opposed to maybe just focusing on like like a small group of core strategies. You know, Mike, I think that it's good to capture that sort of feedback and you know you there's nothing saying that when we do the report you 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 might have a group that you really want to prioritize and you really want to focus on but then you might have another group that maybe you think has potential but you know maybe that it either needs to be more time or you want to do the first group of actions first like those are all things that we can try to sort out in in agenda item five and so um you know, we can we can go back to these and I, I'd say as long as there isn't like an overwhelming vote of no to not move them forward at all. Like if that, if there's something that gets that, then we just will not even write about it any further in the report. We can say it was brought up and then it was voted down. But, you know, documenting is this something we want to do right away? It's high priority. Is this something that we might want to consider further later on after you've made some more progress? Those sorts of things are good to document and we can try to group that in a certain way. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that does Lindsay, thanks. And I guess, you know, if I if it's possible, I'll vote for inclusion of this um, with the hope that we for the report um, is able to kind of prioritize, clarify, and prioritize the strategies that we're we're um, recommending to consider. Okay. Just a quick question, Mike. So when you read this, do you think about the collection site model that we can have transfer stations, or is that something separate? So I view that as something separate. Okay. Because yeah. I kind of see it as the same, just reinterpreting the lines, but yeah. You know, it doesn't necessarily say that. Yeah. So that to me, it's like it's creating creating stuff for you this work and diverting. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that maybe that's really difficult because I don't yeah. associate that with this. And it, maybe I should. It's just. I was just trying to remember how we landed on this verbiage here. Yeah. But Lindsay, I don't know if you can make up what we're saying, but you know, we have this pilot project that's about to roll out to collect material from transfer stations and, and give it to Goodwill Industries and reuse and other people that can use it. Um, and so that's a really tangible thing where we're giving residents an option to donate as opposed to just dump everything in the pit. Um, I don't know if we want to maybe include, you know, rewrite this a little bit to include that because when I read it, I, that's just where my mind goes because I'm working on it. But um, you know, the, that's basically a transfer station, you know, storage, kind of having a site where we can collect stuff and redistribute it. So just I think I do have some comments. So solid um, waste reduction diversion. Um, we're talking about construction demolition. This is okay. Structure demolition degree is a little different from a window that you're saving or architectural stuff. Construction demolition degree is a whole capability. Right? We're talking concrete, wood, scrap metals, hardwood, papers. So there are some things that I, I, I personally think that the construction demolition degree is a larger portion than. Than most things, and don't do this respect, but there's a, there's a huge pile. That's right. We have PPG. So we're talking about diversion and reuse. Talking, like you said, is infinite reuse. We can keep on crushing it reasonably. That keeps it out of the picture. Um, hardwood, we have a huge percent of hardwood in construction demolition, which maybe we shouldn't be there, but it's there. We can pull that out. Scrap metals, we can do nothing. So that all their works out from sticking in the can, setting it to the market. So I think it's they're all kind of mixed in there a little bit. So that's why it's hard to say, no, this isn't this isn't like their version, this isn't like the 
kind of buried in here somehow. It feels as if it's kind of um, that maybe this isn't a uh, right place to establish the new transfer stations. Maybe it's like the these are another program that's So, um, and, you know, I think I think it's something that we also need to discuss. Is it's, it's it's a serious consideration. This is why we have a need for CD recycling. Um, so yeah, that's just what it is. This is Emily from Jacobs to make a, a comment on the the wording of the slide. Um, so I think it's great that you guys brought up that the wording can be adjusted. Um, and I think that goes forward for the other slides as well, because this is like us trying to make sense of the paid meetings, which is like very like multiple meetings over like many hours and also um, the guest speakers. So this one came out of that discussion with the commitment schools. They mentioned that the space was a limiting factor. That's just a point. So when we're voting, yes, we can think about that. That feel free to say if you like disagree with how it's written. Change. Okay, thank you, Emily. Any other items on this one or shall we move on? We did vote. I think we actually have six votes because Mike, you changed yours there, so. Let's move on to the next item. It's number six. Um, this is for CND educate and involve stakeholders. Uh, the lack of education and knowledge in the industry for reuse, recycling, and diversion methods for CND is a challenge. You could have educational programs. This goes along with many of the things I think that we've talked about. Um, all of the considerations so far. So it could be done on its own or in combination with one of the other ones. Does anyone have any comments on this one? I think similar to the comment that Linda made about, about the third consideration, which was deconstruction being a subset of the second consideration, which is diversion. I would say that this um, maybe to streamline our considerations a little bit. This could be a subset of almost any consideration. Um, and maybe not its own consideration. Yeah, I, I like that. Any other comments on this one? Okay, I don't see any hands up online. Um, let's go ahead and just move forward with a yes vote of including some version of this, and that could mean it's a subset of the others and or it's its own, but we can finalize what that looks like in the next agenda item. If you vote yes to do that, please raise your hand. I see three hands in the room. I see Linnea's hand and Haley's hand and Nicole's hand. Thank you. That's another six. OK, we are making some great progress. We are now done with the C&D um, considerations, and so now we get to move on to the seven different PV panel waste program considerations. So let's get started. The first one is evaluate funding strategies. Um, this, you know, the current challenge is establishing a new recycling and reuse program actually requires quite a lot of money. Um, there are lots of different ways of doing this. This is a graphic that Dr. Cooney has in one of his reports where 
it shows there's a whole range from either 100% industry funded to 100% consumer funded and anywhere in between where you can have taxes, tipping fees, advanced disposal fees, environmental fees, contributing operating fees, visible fees, and price add-ons. But clearly this is, is complicated, it takes a bit of work and probably some more um, investigation and maybe even a working group or a action group that could kind of advance this further. But um, this, uh, we could vote to look at this further. Maybe it's something that some, you know, part a portion of the stakeholders wants to carry forward, or maybe you have another idea on what this one looks like. Any questions or comments on this one? I see Nicole's hand up. Nicole, do you have a question? No? Okay. Anyone else have any questions, comments, feedback? Lene. So I just had a clarification. So this um, recommendation is just to evaluate further additional, I mean, evaluate funding strategies. It's not identifying these are the only solutions, correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Anyone else have any comment on this one? OK, let's move on to voting. For all in favor of moving some for, uh, fash or form of this consideration forward, please raise your hand. I see two hands in the room and I see Haley, Nicole, and Lene's hand. Possibly not Nicole's hand, I don't know. Nicole, is, is that a yes vote still? I think your hand might have been raised from the previous one. Yes. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Lindsay, oh. I, I, sh I should have, this is Mike, I should have raised my hand. Just, oh. Yeah. Okay, so there Maybe was six. I, I had a typo, so I guess that works for our both. <laughs> Did you have any comments, Mike, on that one or? Oh, I just, um, I mean, yeah, again, it's you know, a good thing, obviously. I just don't quite know what it means. But, um, but sure. Seek out funding strategy sounds good for me. Goes back to your original point about just the focus. Yeah, you can only have enough time for. Yeah, I mean, I almost think this is like a could be one of those subset items. It's like some consideration. So just trying to you know consolidate and stream yeah. considerations a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I just have to understand personally that. Just because I vote yes on something doesn't mean it's going to be like top priority main consideration. It can just it's just for further consideration in an all in some form of strategy, actually. Yes, that sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Nicole, did you have a comment or a question? No, sorry, I just keep not taking my hand down. No worries. It's hard to remember that for sure. I have trouble. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on then to item number two for the PV panel waste. And this is consider establishing sites for collection, sorting, processing, and staging. Again, it's the physical space challenge that we talked about for CND. Um, the similarly to the pilot project that Quinn has mentioned, you know, this is another opportunity to potentially make that 
if that pilot is successful, something more long term, more permanent, but focusing on providing space for the PV panel waste as well. So again, it could be on its own. It could be in combination of CND and other materials. Um, but that was the idea for this one. Any questions, other feedback on this one? Lene? So I have two comments, I guess. One, if we keep this language, um, we should be similar to the CND one, separate the discussion between source reduction and recycling. And then two is, you know, we really didn't have opportunity to really consider where the best collection point in this whole recycling or reuse option is. And, you know, we're looking at collection very similar to CND where it's at the point of, um, I guess, transported to a different location. I think in this case, we do have more specialized contractors where we could potentially utilize that um, that level of collection, you know, a hundred something contractor points rather than um, thousands and thousands of homeowner generation points um, to, to look at the point of collection. And by limiting the amount of collection points, we can have better control of what we get. And so, um, you know, if I, I really do think we need to kind of look at that as a possibility. Um, and if it's from a source reduction standpoint, they, they could easily identify which panels work and which don't, and they can identify which goes for recycling and which goes for reuse. Um, and then it doesn't have to necessarily go to a larger collection point for someone else to identify what works, what doesn't, and then go into the to recycling. So I'm I'm I, I don't personally I'm not necessarily at this point where I think this is a pos possible. I mean, yeah, anything is a possible solution, but I don't I don't know if I'm at the point where this is the the best way path forward. So I, I'm. That's okay. kind of where I'm at. Thank you. So Any this is, this feedback is my, on that? Yeah. This is my video. I'll, I'll share a comment. Um, I, I, I think I'm probably where the name is at too, but maybe for a different reason. Um, again, this is, you know, this is a good, good sounding thing. Um, I kind of I, I view this as like a, as an area that's like prime for like extended producer responsibility. Um, putting, in other words, kind of putting the burden on the manufacturers, retailers to step up and play more of a role in the management of um, the life cycle of this material. I'm trying not to call it waste, I guess. Um, so you know, I'd be supportive of this. You know, it's a, it, to the extent that it doesn't. Um, you know, I would prefer the, the focus to be like a like a little. You know, maybe not not more, more upstream, but more like more on. Um, or um, yeah. Kind of a different, kind of a different strategy altogether, I guess. Like I see, we're getting to it. Um, um, item six for uh, consideration number six. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm not sure how I feel about this one. Okay. Any other comments? Was there a member that would like to? That was part of the discussion that maybe wants to clarify anything. And I see, let me just clarify too. Sorry, Nancy. I see Kapa'a station project pilot is, is listed on here. And not to take 
anything away from that, you know, that's something that we're really, really happy to be getting into with reuse. Um, this is more like kind of my comment is more like PV panel specific and not not like um, not um, you know for all the other materials that we're talking about collecting and reusing in that pilot. Okay. Actually, on that, let's see. Um, in your last presentation, last meeting, you talked about like our collaboration with and Kit and stuff. I, I I should just make a note for everyone. Like the jury's still out on how much we can actually recover and redistribute in terms of solar panels. Um, it's there's just a huge supply. And we, you know, still evaluating that. I mean, it's going well, but. There might be a saturation in terms of demand for them. You just okay. do that in the house. Someone has like a thousand panels to donate. It was just last week, so we're like sort of thinking about how this might play out. It's Great. Okay, thanks, Quinn. All right, let's go ahead and um, move forward with a vote for those in favor of moving some form of this forward please raise your hand i think i see two hands in the room any online looks like nicole and oh, Nic haley so one on oh and nicole all right so i think we have a vote of four Let's keep moving. Item number three, establishing a statewide stewardship program. Um, so, you know, the challenge is that it's an extremely complex process for PV recycling. And we've got this great inner island solar supply and house recycling program that's been going on. They started small scale version, but it's something like this really should be potentially scaled up. And so that's what this one is about is how do you scale up something like that? And when we had one of our guest speakers at the permitted interaction group, Dr. Cooney recommended establishing a statewide stewardship program to support PV panel recycling. And this could be done a bunch of different ways. Um, a 403B nonprofit organization could provide, you know, lead this and have oversight from manufacturers and government agencies. Uh, there could be, uh, you know, lots of different ways of doing this. So again, this one is really just consider establishing a statewide stewardship program. You would have to obviously do a lot more work probably some economic studies and things like that to really figure out what you wanted this to look like. And just keep in mind too that industry is generally watching how California's program is going to roll out and, and what sort of impact that has. So things to keep in mind and maybe consider as you're prioritizing when you wanna focus on certain things. Any comments, questions, feedback on this one? Lene. So I, I recognize that um, that this is it's just a consideration, but I I, I don't necessarily want this to um, overshadow other possible. Um, so potential solutions. I mean, EPR could lead to a statewide um, stewardship program in in part, um, but I I don't know if I necessarily would like to. Uh, I just don't want it to overshadow one potential solution over another. I I don't know if we are. Um, well, at least I'm I'm not ready to commit to. A, a direction yet as far as um, best possible option for 
PV panels. And I guess that's where I'm kind of struggling. OK, that's good to note. Nicole. Can you all hear me OK? Yes. OK, great. Um, generally speaking and specifically speaking to this, I guess I don't see any it, considering this plan isn't going to have teeth and nothing is a committed direction and all of the language is consider and explore and investigate. Uh, I don't see any harm in including more than less because we really don't know. Uh, we haven't had the scope of the time to decide which is the best and only direction. So I guess I'm throwing that out to the group to consider is none of this is committal and it's it's really planting seeds for future work. So is it a bad thing to put more ideas than less in there? Thank you, Nicole. Good point. Anybody want to respond to that or mention anything else? Uh, it's been a uh, good one, Nicole. Uh, I just, something separate, I just want technicality. Um, I think it's meant to save um, programs should be, should be led by a 501c3 nonprofit. It's 403b is retirement account structure. So <laughs> okay. Uh, that could be an interesting structure. <laughs> so, Thanks, Quinn. All right, let's go ahead and move forward with a vote for those in favor of having some form of this moving forward into the report. Please raise your hand. OK, sorry, I uh, you're too fast for me. I was looking at the online and I missed the in in room. So I see two hands in room. Three hands and then I see Nicole, Haley and Lene. So another six hands and we can talk about priority and all of that detail in the next segment. So let's move along to item four. Incentivize and educate owners about PV panel maintenance. Challenges panels are taken down and replaced sooner than we need them to be. Installers encourage replacement of panels due to new technologies and owners are unaware of proper panel maintenance. So this leads to unnecessary waste of PV panels. This is certainly a way you could have some source reduction. Um, so perhaps we need to find a way to establish an incentivization program and also public education on installation, regular maintenance, cleaning, and et cetera, to expand, increase in the lifespan. Nicole, do you have a comment on this one? No. Okay, anyone else? Uh, um, I, I think we need to incentivize them much. The incentive is they get better performing habits. I think education is really all we need. Okay. I would agree with that. Yes, yeah, I mean, you yeah, know, the education about the money that they can say it's probably all the incentives of the time. So. <laughs> Okay. Any other comment on that one? All right, let's move on to a vote then. For those wanting to vote yes, please raise your hand. I see three hands in the room. I see Online, Lene, Haley, and Nicole. Six six votes again. Thank you all.
Is everybody doing OK? My goal is to get through all of the considerations agenda item four and then give you a break and then have a little bit of a break, come back and figure finish the rest of the meeting. But if you are needing a break sooner, please do let me know. Item number five for PV panel waste is to subsidize the shipping cost to ship PV panel waste to the mainland. Um, shipping costs to send panels to the mainland is very expensive. The panels are very heavy. There's currently no on island reuse, big major reuse or recycling program. And so in order to have a program like that, you would have to subsidize it. So that's basically the idea of this. This is probably another one to consider combining or being a subset or possibly getting rid of altogether. So Lene, comment? Yeah, my comment was to, this would be like the funding source. So if the consumer is paying for um, panels to be replaced, that cost for disposal of the old panels will likely be in the cost of the replacement. So it would already be paid for. I don't think there's a subsidy. Um, subsidy. It's actually payment. So yeah, I think it's it can be combined with the, the first one as far as funding a program, which could okay. be consumer fees, consumer costs, yeah. So combine. Okay. Was there another comment? It looked like something might have flashed, but I missed it. Um, I did some my just a comment. Um, and I, I it's I, I don't know enough about PV and recycling, but if I, you know, it's, I, first of all, I guess a second Lene's comment, and maybe this would be um, yeah, as part of it. Also, like maybe this could be as part of an EPR um, initiative. Um, but also, like, I mean, if we're just if we're just going to pay the companies to, or somehow subsidize companies are going to somehow subsidize to just ship. PV panel waste to the mainland, so it could be landfill there. If that's what we're talking about, or process there. Nope. Then, that's okay. not what we're talking about. So um, we, we had a, a great presenter come into this group and talk about the Inner Island Solar Program. And one of the things that sort of keeps them from being able to do more or to expand is that the shipping costs are really high. And so they're kind of just doing this program on their own right now. And it's going okay, but it, it is a limiting factor. And these panels are getting shipped to the mainland to be disassembled and recycled. The materials recovered. There's a lot of different materials in a PV panel that can be recycled, but it, that is only happening. Not it's not happening on island, so it has to be shipped somewhere. Um, and currently, the places it's getting shipped is to the mainland. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Um, obviously, a good program. I would just, I would um, just want to make sure that whatever we endorse here is is actual source reduction again, and not recycling. Okay. And just one reminder on that, Mike. I know your your stance on source reduction, but there is quite a bit of, you know, benefit in reducing the toxicity of. Um, illegally dumped PV panel waste, and so certainly another form of source reduction, slightly different than probably the one you're focused on. But yeah, no, no doubt. Um, just trying to keep us focused on our charter. Thank if you. This was the recycling working group. I'd be all for it. All right, let's move along to a vote then for those in favor of moving some form of this forward into the next item. Please vote yes by raising your hand. Three hands in the room, and then I see Haley's hand online, Nicole's hand online. Oh, yep. Looks like there are five votes total. Correct me if I miss someone. 
Let's move along to item six. We are almost done with PV panel waste. This one is extended producer responsibility. Um, the lack of regulation and responsibility placed on the on producers is a challenge. Uh, sorry. The lack of re regulation and res responsibility placed on, placed on the producers makes it a challenge to do the right thing with PV panels. EPR for panels would likely be difficult to implement. Um, there has been, you know, shown places pushing back from industry, and um, there is this, you know, potential concern of manufacturers pulling out from the Hawaii market. That has happened in other places. This is a EPR map that shows currently there is only out of all the, the states within the United States, Washington is the only state that has a state law that is EPR focused on PV panel waste. And there is one local law, which is in New York, that also exists. So there isn't a lot of precedence of this working right now. California is in the process of figuring out how they're doing that. And they have a lot of eyes on them to see how that actually gets rolled out and how um, what are the impacts that comes from that. So something to keep in mind. Nicole, I see your hand up. Is this a question for this item number six? No, sorry. No worries. Anyone have a, a question, comment? other feedback on this one and this again is EPR for PV panel waste specifically. Okay. Um, let's move forward then with a vote for those in favor of having some form of this in the recommendations. Please raise your hand. Three hands in the room. Nicole, Haley, and Lene, three hands online gives us a total of six votes. Thank you all. Item seven, support or incentivize secondary market programs for reuse. Many use panels with life still in them, but not enough demand, uh, especially low demand for older panels with older technology. We have this example program that Quinn has mentioned. Possible solutions, tax incentives for used panel receivers to increase the market demand. So that is the way that it's currently written, certainly could change up the language if needed. Any comment or feedback on this one? Lene. Hey Quinn, did you mention that there is a possibility that we could reach saturation fairly early on this? Yeah, it, we're concerned about just, yeah, there being more supplies of used um, panels than there is demand. But, you and know, should still, we, value, still evaluating that. Yeah, so should we change to just add the word consider <laughs> on this number seven? Consider supporting, incent incentivizing. Good, I, good suggestion. I think what would help is that last bullet where people using the use panels would still get a tax incentive. If I'm reading that right. Sort of like similar to like electric cars, like you, you have to buy one new you get an incentive. People are looking at changing that too. So. Okay. All right, let's move forward with a vote uh, for those in favor of moving this item seven forward. Please raise your hand. 
Three hands in the room. Lene and Haley have hands up online. That's a vote of five. Thank you. Let's move along. All right, we're down. We've got two of the permitted interaction groups done. Great job. This is the last one. This one is the um, food related packaging and food waste and organics one. Uh, and we've got a variety of considerations here. The first one is kind of combined for those two areas. And then we've got other areas that are sort of separated between if it's food, wear, packaging, or food waste related items. So just to keep us moving forward. So the first consideration for this uh, permitted interaction group was seek EPA funding. Um, there is this example for the County of Hawaii that recently was awarded $1.5 million for city scale reusable foodware and refillable bottle system. So you know, there is funding out there. They're going to be doing another round soon of this same grant program. Solution is to apply for that funding and or other funding. Um, and then this could be done by the city and or other stakeholder partnerships. Could be used for a lot of different things. Um, you'll see as we move forward that this, this permitted interaction group really wanted to incorporate funding and also education in many of the programs, the other considerations is kind of like a subset. So that is certainly an opportunity to streamline as well. Um, speaking of that, you can see the funding could be used for, for these different things here. So that's how this group was considering things. Um, sorry about that, go back. Any comments, questions, or otherwise on this? I don't see anybody in the room or online. All right, then let's go ahead and move forward with a vote for this one. For those in favor of the seeking EPA funding for these items for food uh, packaging and organics, please raise your hand. Okay, I see three hands in the room, I believe, or is that only two? Three. Three, and then I see online four hands, Nicole, Haley, Lene, and Tina. So we have seven votes for this one. All right. Next one is the food service wear, a reusable container and mobile washing program. Zero Waste Oahu has reusable containers from a prior pilot project that can be utilized for other uses. Um, kind of the challenge to making a, a big program using those containers is, and a, a barrier from the previous project was the lack of access to washing facilities. And currently there is policy language that states that food trucks and mobile washing service um, needs to have a connection to a brick and mortar commercial kitchen. So that's really limiting who all can provide this washing service. Um, there are some really great examples of reusable container and mobile washing programs happening. You can check them out. Um, but some solutions are establishing policy language exemption for mobile washing, mobile dishwashing service to not require a commercial kitchen connection having public education, launching a pilot program and launching a program. So just a little bit of context here, this group did try to build out kind of the, the steps that you would need to, to do these sorts of actions. So that's why it looks slightly different than the other group. Nicole, I see your hand up. You have something that you'd like to say about this one? Nope, sorry. No, okay, thank you. 
Anybody else? Lene? I had a question. Um, if there is um, some difficulty on mobile washing, what if a pilot be done where it's in a brick and mortar uh, setting so that we can show success first in uh, without, and then we might be, it might be easier to change uh, whether it's rules or law in something that we don't have uh, regulatory, um, I mean, language in ex currently in existence. Nicole, do you have uh, something to, to address Lene's question? Yeah, I that's a fantastic idea. We did run a pilot program for a year and a half um, washing in a commercial kitchen. So we do have data on successfully um, diverting and washing 20,000 containers and, and what that took. And OK, so this would be like normal takeout containers rather than like a restaurant setting, correct? Uh, yeah, we were talking specifically about events, if I recall correctly. Um, Correct. And, uh, yeah. So the idea is to have a washing option available at event spaces or. Uh, that, yeah, that was one thing we discussed. Oh, oh, OK, so are we talking about like catered events, not like a food truck um, scenario? That's correct. Really large events. Let me move to the next, actually, the slide that shows this a little bit further out um, with the detailed language here. So the group um, was thinking about if, if we did it this way, you draft the language for the policy change, have a identify a coalition for the policy, identify resources and infrastructure needed, do some education tours. Uh, start the education uh, regulation process, the policy change is finalized, apply for your funding then, and then start your education and then implement the pilot. And then I think, hold on real quick. One thing we were thinking about is after you did this pilot, you would actually incentivize events that had 100 people or more um, to utilize reusable serviceware and mobile washing unit. If that answers your question. Okay, so we're targeting like um, out outdoor events, essentially weddings and and that kind of thing. Correct. Big big events. Okay. Uh, like um, I don't know, just anything with a hundred people or plus. So let me let me add that in here. If I can expand on that, a, a great example was um, the Fosse Municipal Grounds hosted Korea Fest um, a few months ago. So that, you know, there were thousands of people coming through there. That could be an eligible type of event in addition to private events like weddings. Um, I don't think we were really thinking about private events as much as publicly attended events, events at the Waikiki Shell. Could, the, right. could the service could the service where be read I mean easily transported to a brick and mortar facility? I'm just trying to think out of you know, changing law might be might not necessarily be all that easy. But um, if there's a way to proceed or find a way to proceed um, if we are stalled in that fashion. Um, anyway, these are just thoughts. Okay. Any other comments, questions, feedback? Let's go ahead and take a vote then for those in favor of moving forward the food service wear reusable container and mobile washing program in some form or fashion. Please raise your hand. I see three hands in the room. I see 
two hand, three hands online, Nicole, Haley, and Lene. Six hands total. So we will move on to the next item three. And this is the future recommendations. Um, so, all right, sorry, the good service, food service. So this is the future recommendation here where um, we would launch the program. So I think this actually is in combination of the next one. I think we will just um, talk about this as we figure out the details of what that consideration looks like. And packaging materials. This one had a future recommendation as well of creating a task force or extending the source reduction working group to look at the current state and recommendations um, for next steps of different packaging materials with EPR, pallets, et cetera. So again, this is one of those ones that was more like, keep working on this, keep looking at it. There wasn't a specific prioritized action to happen right now, but something that the group thought was necessary to at least continue considering along in the future. So let me get back to our board. I'm going to say this is part of two. And then any comments on this item? Sorry about that. Then let's go ahead and take a vote for those in favor of the packaging material, future items, which include looking at having a task force, looking at EPR and other future actions. Uh, please raise your hand. I see three hands in the room. I see two hands online. Nicole and Lene, and that is a total of five votes. All right, thank you. Moving on to item number five. This one is under food waste and it's increasing food donations. Uh, the Good Samaritan Law protects good faith food donors from civil and criminal liability and encourages food donations. Uh, more donate, uh, businesses could donate food, but they don't. Some businesses are not aware of the donor liability protections in place. And the Good Samaritan law currently excludes individuals from donating food. Currently, donors must have a commercial kitchen with specified requirements in order to fall within th this protection. So some solutions are you could incentivize food donations at locations with an award or certificate. Certainly, there's some educational efforts needed and potentially could update the Good Samaritan language to be more expansive. Any comments on this one? Nicole, is that your hand up for comment on this one? Lene, um, do you have? Oh, sorry, go ahead, Nicole. No, nope, never mind. Okay, Lene, do you have comment on this one? Okay, so I might have spaced a bit because I thought we were voting on this um, last time around. Are we not? So we're. What did we vote on? So this one is on food donations and it's uh -huh. actually it's looking at you know if you're going to try to have an award at businesses okay. that promote that the last one was on future packaging um efforts so it could be like epr related it's a task force to try to look at future things with packaging of food waste material oh so we're not going fall oh i was trying to follow based on the slides before 
I don't have that slide. I think it's a little confusing, so let me back up with the slides and maybe it'll clarify it. So okay. this group had, they were trying to prioritize things that could happen like right away, right? So the first one they really wanted to talk about was this mobile dishwashing and food service, food serviceware program. They came up with this three-year plan, but then they also had ideas of, you know, once you get to this, these are the steps you would take to get just to do the pilot project. Once you get beyond the pilot project, then there was some other actions trying to expand this a little bit further, right? And then they also had this other future recommendation for just, so this is serviceware and then other packaging materials. They had this other idea of creating a task force um, and continuing to look at you know, different things that they could do to have source reduction of packaging materials related to food waste. So that okay. was separate. Okay. Does that clarify things at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't so see now a slide we're for on that, but... the the food donation mm -hmm. one. Okay. Did you have a comment or question on the food donation one? No. Anyone else have a comment, question, any sort of feedback? So let's go ahead and move forward with a vote for this one. For those in favor of including this in some form, please raise your hand. Three hands in the room. I see Nicole, Tina, and Lene's hands up online. That is Vote of six. All right. Okay. Now we are on this item, which is increasing food recycling. Um, and so this, the current policy ordinance requires businesses of a certain size to send food waste to recycling facilities for composting. Uh, there's an opportunity policy language change could increase food recycling by requiring additional sizes of businesses to separate food waste and send it to recycling slash composting facilities. So this is um, recommending expanding that ordinance to require more businesses and then also establishing a organics and composting task force to focus and discuss this topic further. Any comments or questions on this item? Lene. Wouldn't we want to include um, uh, reuse in this? Or are we considering animal feed as recycling for this purpose? Good question. I think it could be done a lot of different ways. What is your recommendation here? I'm not familiar with the exact language in the ordinance, so I don't know how, whether or not that's an option. Okay. Is that the specific kind of reuse you're talking about, though, is animal feed? Yeah, being that as Mike keeps reminding us, this is a source reduction working group, and I know I keep going into um, looking at recycling myself, but uses animal weed for what we consider here, that would be, that would constitute reuse. Okay, thank you. Nicole, did you have a comment on that? Uh, just that I think that's a great point, and maybe we could include um, also the addition of Di uh, prioritizing diversion first to, of edible food to groups like the food bank. Um, although the vast majority of commercial food waste is, is probably not going to be edible, but I think that would be great to include. Thank you. 
Anybody else have any feedback or comments on this one? Um, or, uh, I mentioned something. Yeah. Um, yeah, so ordinance, that section of chapter of ordinance is basically requires the city to include um, food waste in its um, curbside recycling program, um, which we are doing. Um, and we'll, you know, we're going to you know, implement, we're actually going to implement that in um, 2025. Um, I, um, and I'll just maybe echo what's already been said by the committee of the poll. Um, I, I, I think it would be better to, um, and I don't want to put words in my mouth, so this isn't exactly what they said, but I, I, I think it would be better to kind of reword this one. Um, I don't know if we can actually do that, but, um, to, to focus more on, on, on reuse, um, I don't, um, you know, we are, I guess, yeah, the city's kind of already got, got one of the solutions covered. Um, you know, we're going to accept all food waste from curbside residential collection. And so that's going to happen. Um, you know, I think maybe our time is better spent on, on looking at maybe commercial reuse um, strategies, and not so much the curbside. The curbside area, which is kind of already close. Okay, so I think the the issue here, Mike, is that not all businesses have to segregate their food waste. Now it's just a certain size businesses. The way that this is written, and so this was saying that instead of just looking at that certain size, it's expanding it beyond that. So it's more businesses. Oh, sorry, Lindsay. Yeah, I, I guess I'm looking at the, ord the ordinance and I'm, I guess I'm not even clear because the screen is probably locked um, from our viewpoint, but if that's the. Um, OK, I'm, I apologize. I'm, I'm confusing the ordinance with um, the curbside um, ordinance, so please disregard everything that I just said. Um, but yeah, I guess it still it still stands that. Um, yeah, I, I would I would prefer that the. Um, this consideration be reworded to uh, promote reuse rather than recycling. Okay. <laughs> and Tina, I see your hand up. Yeah, I was talking to some of the larger restaurants and most of the hotels. They're already recycling their food through, um, not well, food bank is one of them. And then um, there's a couple, Aloha Harvest and a few others, and they donate or to churches and stuff like that. Uh, for their food programs. They don't publicize it a lot, but a lot of them are already doing that. Okay. So when you're looking at the size, I mean, the bigger ones are doing it. Some of the smaller ones, it's just hard for them to keep it because of storage space. So you need to, we need to keep that in mind too. Um, but a lot of the smaller restaurants that I've talked to, especially in Kaimuki, the leftovers go home with their employees to feed the employees' families. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Anyone else have any more feedback on this consideration? All right, then let's move forward with a vote for those in favor of moving forward of some form of this. Uh, please raise your hand. And I somehow did something to my screen and I can't see anybody in the room anymore. So if someone could tell me whose hand is up, I'd appreciate it. Three, three, three hands in the room. Yes. OK, then I see three hands online. Haley, Nicole and Tina. That is a total of six votes for this one as well. All right, great. So then again, we've got some future recommendations. Um, I think probably the best thing to do is add, you know, conversation of these into the report as applicable. I think we've talked about most of them already anyways. 
So that actually, oh, unless Nicole has a comment. Do you have a comment, Nicole? No. Okay, that actually in concludes our item uh, four. So great job on that, everyone. Um, so I would like to propose that we have a short break, get everybody up and moving around. Um, and then if we could report back at, sorry, what time is it there? It's 3.06 there now. So at 3.15, could we re return back to the room and continue at item five? And for those online that are part of the public testimony group, this is an item that we will be getting public testimony for. So if you're here for that, that your time is almost come. Thanks for your patience. All right, well, we'll see you soon then. 3.15.
Welcome back, everybody. We're going to get started here pretty soon. I can't see the only part of the room that I can see is the the podium and the area Julie's at. So just so you know. Oh, yeah, my phone died, but we're reconnecting. OK, thank you. Well, welcome back, everyone. We're going to get started here again very soon. So here we are on agenda item number five, and this one is finalize recommendations. It is the information and action item. Before I start, I wanna make sure we still have a quorum. And since I can't see the room, I'm gonna need some help from my room facilitators. How many people from the working group are in the room? Two. Two. And it looks like we have Nicole and Haley online. Is that correct? That are back. And Lene. And Lene. That's only five. We need one more. Uh, Tina or? Tina, are you back? I'm back. OK, great. Uh, Tina, are you back as well? And Nicole, I think you are back too. So we've got Haley, Nicole, and Lene, Alan and Quinn. Hopefully Michael join us here momentarily. Nicole, are you back? OK, welcome back, Mike. I think we now have a quorum, so let's get started. Uh, again, welcome back to the Source Reduction Working Group meeting number four. We have been very busy today. Uh, we've gone through items one through four and we are on the fifth agenda item. It is the finalize recommendations. And this is an information and an action one. So we are inviting public testimony. So let's begin with that. Um, oral testimony will be taken in the following order. In-person comments of registered folks first, and then we will move to video conference comments. Uh, is there anyone that was registered in the room to testify for this item? No. Um, no. And then let's move on to Online testifiers, is there anyone that has indicated via their hand raise or in the chat that they would like to testify at this time? While we're waiting just a second longer, I do want to mention that we did receive a letter from BIA Hawaii and that was provided to the Source Reduction Working Group members. 
Uh, so Dean has his uh, hand up. Great, welcome Dean. Please, um, would, if you would like to take your microphone off mute, you will have two minutes to testify and Eunice will um, tell you when that time starts. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm actually here representing um, Jessica Leona from BIA Hawaii. Uh, she's transitioning out of the position, so we kind of just saw filling in for her right now. I just wanted oh. to make sure that um, the task force or the working group got a copy of the BIA letter that was sent out on Friday. And I would hope that it would be included in whatever final report comes out from this working group. Does that, is that all you wanted to say, Mr. Uchida? Yeah, that's it. Okay, yes, I wanna clarify that, yes, we did receive the letter and um, it was distributed to the working group members today. Um, it will also, it can also be included in the report as well. And earlier in the meeting, I, I did um, note to all of the group that we are going to be working on seeing if BIA Hawaii would like to um, have a replacement for Jess, so we'll be in communication further on that. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else that would like to testify at this time? Dr. Babcock, I know that you had a comment. Maybe this is a good time now. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think I, 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 won't, uh, I won't comment at this time. Thanks. Okay, thank you for your patience. All right, so then that brings us back to the source reduction working group team. Um, we just spent a lot of time talking about each of the considerations. Uh, that is this part of the little graphic here. So we did the discussing and the quick vote. Um, and then the idea now is that we should try to shape these considerations up as much as possible so that you're comfortable with the wording as they are written so that they're included in the report in the fashion that you would like to see them. Um, this is also an opportunity to say that if there's a particular item that you think needs to have maybe some follow-on steps in order to feel more comfortable about proceeding with this particular item, that's a good time to get those items mentioned as well. And then we are going to make some formal motions to approve the recommendations. So I know we just did a lot of voting, but now is the time where we're gonna try to get the wording just right, the steps just right, and then we'll have to do some motions to see how you all wanna proceed with the considerations. So hopefully this can go fairly quickly. I know we're, um, this is taking a bit of time, but I think it's worth the effort for sure. And um, again, I thank you all for your participation so far. Made a lot of great uh, progress. So again, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring the Jamboard back up that we had, and we're just gonna run through them. And I think most of them had at least five votes. Maybe some didn't, but um, it doesn't really streamline things significantly um, yet. But perhaps, you know, some creative thinking about how we combine things or such. Now is the time to mention that. So let's go back to item one. This was the seek out funding strategies for C and D waste considerations. There was six votes. There was a lot of talk about maybe just making this one a subset of all of them and then also being very careful about what type of grant funding you do and what sort of program you apply it to because we don't want to, you know, do some sort of program that gets it for a year and then it goes away. So And I can certainly expand the screen. Does that make it easier to see? Yes. And apologies for typos. Uh, my visual and listening and typing skills are at their maximum skill set at the moment. So I'm sure I've gotten lots of errors here. <laughs> All right, so the idea here again is it looks like there was quite a bit of um, 
support for moving this one forward. Uh, I would like to formalize how this is written a little bit more. So currently it's written city can apply for grants or build partnership that support and seek grant funding. First of all, do you want to keep this as a standalone item or do you want to just start combining it with everything? I think it lends itself to being combined with other considerations. Um, Is there anyone opposed to combining it with other considerations? If you are opposed, please just raise your hand so that I can get a quick read of that. I don't see any hands raised, so I'm going to say that um, this consideration will be combined with others as applicable and will not be a standalone. All right, then let's go back to the slides and I think we actually need to motion to approve that. So I'm going to need someone to be very specific about stating what we're saying. Um, so for instance, if you suggest that we move, I move that we vote on including, what was it called? Sorry, let me get it back up on the screen here. Funding strategies as a subset of the other considerations. So that's what we would say if that is, in fact, the motion that you are considering. Is there anyone that would like to make a motion? To make a motion, we just have to read, read that and then. So yeah, the motion, the motion would be to con include this item one for C and D as a subset of the other considerations. So, OK, I move that we vote on inclusion of seeking alternative seeking funding opportunities as a recommendation. Oh, wait, OK, so. As a subset of other considerations. As a subset of other considerations and source reduction particular part. Sorry. I'll say the key. Is there someone that would second that motion? I'll, I'll second that. All in favor, vote aye if you're in person and raise your hand if you're online, please. Um, Could you give me a count of the eyes in the room? Three eyes in the room. OK, and we have four online, Nicole, Lene, Haley and Tina. Thank you. Um, so let it be noted that this item will be included in the source reduction report as a subset of other considerations as applicable. All right, so let's move to the next one. Hopefully this process will get a little easier as we get through it. This one is adopting a diversion ordinance as a reminder to the group. We did talk a little bit about um, changing this to be more holistic so that it would combine the diversion ordinance with the deconstruction ordinance. So you could either keep them separate and or um, make them their combined version. Um, other options are, you know, you could 
say sort of the next steps that you think would be needed in order to be comfortable moving this forward. Perhaps you want a different study, an economic evaluation, talk to other um, entities that have done something like this. I don't know. So those are just some ideas. Um, does anyone have modifications for how this is written? Well, so, um, so Lindsay, like once we sort of put this officially into the report, then, you know, we can dig into how that's done later or, or someone can. Um, yeah. Because we, we don't need to like get into the details within this group, do we? We don't need to. I mean, I'd say that for the ones, this is probably too tricky of one to get into the details, right? But if there are considerations where you could just like get the details out, then you could actually maybe move forward with something a little faster, right? So the goal here is just defining it to the level that we're comfortable. So if it's consider adopting a an ordinance that might include both diversion and deconstruction, we could say that. Or if it's going ahead and adopting, I mean, the way that it's written now, it's adopting a diversion ordinance. So are we comfortable with that language or do we want it modified? Uh, I think it's fine. I guess the question here again is, do, do we combine the the two, the diversion and the C and D one to be kind of one mm -hmm. initiative in your report? So I, I I guess I'll make the motion to combine those two uh, to consolidate our recommendations, um, but uh, leave them as written. Can I get a second to that motion? I'll second I it. That motion. So all members in favor of combining the um, C and D adopt a diversion ordinance with the C and D adopt a deconstruction ordinance, please say aye in person and raise your hand online. Aye. Aye. Was that two eyes in the room? Three in the room and four online. That is from Nicole, Haley, Lene, and Tina. Okay, great. That bumps us right to number four then. This one is streamline the permitting process for CND and concrete waste recyclers. Again, this was written as industry stakeholders could work with state to streamline and simplify the permitting process, provide online education. There was discussion from the group that um, perhaps we need to streamline more than just the state process, but also the city. There was also commentary that there is an e-permitting system that is happening already, um, so that might help streamline this process a little. And also, if we're talking about really reuse, that the solid waste permit doesn't apply anyways. Um, and Mike, you wanted to make sure this one is focused on source reduction. So I think it sounds like perhaps we might need to establish some sort of modification in the wording. Is there anyone that has suggestions on what that looks like?
We did have six votes to move this one forward. Um, perhaps would you like to just leave the wording as is? And if so, would someone like to make a motion? Lindsay, could you make the wording larger on, her, on the screen? Um, maybe. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I'm not doing it right. Hold on. <clears throat> Is there? Boy, you all are getting to enjoy my technical capabilities. Apologies. Is that better? That yeah. Yeah. Nicole, do you have your hand up? Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, I think for my <clears throat> brain, it would be easier to get specific on some of the language once there's like a first draft written down and like maybe take some more introverted time to think about it and get detailed. Is there there's going to be an opportunity for that, correct? This is not our only chance to workshop. You are correct. So um, the closer we get it to correct the first time, the easier. But there is a chance once we draft the report it's for you to provide some comments. So that is an excellent suggestion that if you're not ready to say something today, we can leave it as is and then you can think about it and we can come back to it. Sounds like that might be where we're at. Um, would someone like to make to make a motion? I don't think the key language has is then worked on it for uh, each other. I think we we, we do need some time to do uh, see how we can get, you know, put this together and make more sense. Okay. Uh, all the state and the city. What we need to really talk about the issues that we All right. Would someone like to make a motion to include streamlining the permitting process for C and D and concrete recyclers as a consideration in the report? Sorry, I don't think also say could we just not just specifically say C and D and concrete if it's I think it's all recyclers, it's gonna be anything, anything, but if there's an opportunity to recycle plastics in the future, it's gonna be what I've seen. So you're suggesting so this this you know came out of the C and D pig, right. so yeah. Are you saying to remove the word concrete? Okay. Well, and I think it's maybe more of a general term. And then as far as we are in the in, in, in wasted version, but it's this is one of the most touches that right? like, really makes sense. So, you know, to get rid of the toxicity of dealing with elevated, you could be used with respect and it will help. So, if we just say, you know, let's look at C and D and concrete or eliminating every other race or potential recycling you know, we could use the to, to uh, expedite and eliminate process. Yeah, but isn't it just for like that C and D is a bigger waste of what you're determining? It's fun to you know more about I do. Yeah. Um, I, I think I do agree that it needs more work. I don't have my consideration of how it's potentially out of the street and anybody else. I'm having some difficulty hearing the room, but um, being that concrete is a subset of C and D, would it just help to say um, or C and D management? 
So streamline permitting process for C and D management. Because then it doesn't necessarily mean um, or, or C and D material management, then it could also apply for reuse, although it would not be specific to the state's solid waste permit, but it could be for land use or zoning or or any other permitting issues if that's if it's going to be broader to other permit um, types of permits. But. Um, I think that's a great suggestion, Lene, and then you could get more specific on what permits later on. But if we change this to streamline permitting process for C and D material management. Is there anyone that would like to make a motion to consider that or to include that? Sorry. Well, I guess with that stipulation that for folks that are diverting waste, right? And we would want to be making it easier for landfills. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that the, the, uh, the idea would be making it easier for that. So I think we should make sure that we cover that. I think it's, you know, we're looking at, you know, concrete recycling is this huge. So it's, it's, it's a reduce, but it's still, it's still one of the need to be that. And then I know you guys will see it in the, in the, uh, in the retorts as far as the waste stream, it's a bit small, but they do really need to travel to the site concrete. But it is a challenge to start it off. So I think it's I think it's worth considering. The language is I think I just want to make one clarification. The requirements for landfills and recyclers are different based on the statutory and regulatory requirements. What we're doing for permitting streamlining is the um I guess the the process in which to do it, not necessarily the changing of the statutes or rules or, or the requirements, say, for landfills. So um, it, it, that that's what we're currently working on. All right, I'll, I'd like to make a motion to proceed with number four and I'll straight on the permitting processes. Is there anyone that would second that motion? Second. All members in favor of inclusion of streamlining the permitting process for CD materials management say aye. 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 And online, please raise your hand. Looks like there was three eyes in the room and three online, so six votes. Who are the members online? Nicole. Correct. Thank you. All right. Um, number five is establish transfer stations and stockpiling areas for C and D waste. There was a um, recommendation to change the wording on this one so let's try to get the wording right and then we can motion to include it there was a lot of uh, support for this one as well six votes any suggestions on how we modify this language Establish um, transfer station slash staging and storage areas for C and D materials. How about that? In, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you know what we're what we're you know in the context of source reduction, what we're talking about. But this item is um, basically areas where um, you know the the. The, the generate, you know, we take that someone takes the waste from the generator, we put it in an area where it's where it's stored before it's reused or repurposed um, somewhere else. So, um, if, the, if that's if that's the understanding of this consideration, um, I think 
again, it's a good it's a good thing not to take away from the idea, but I think we can maybe eliminate the word transfer stations from this consideration because transfer stations to me anyway, and maybe I'm wrong about this if someone please correct me, the transfer stations kind of that word implies like a like a stop on the way to disposal or or even or maybe recycling, not not really like a source reduction. Uh, you know, and not an element of source reduction. But I agree. I think you we know, don't determine that with just the needs that the transfer station and the revenue you call out it uh, is is a CG segment station. So it might this might not be the venue for you know after yeah. looking at it. Um, well, putting this as a recommendation to be established as a decision. I think this, if if I am agenda I have number the recommendation number four helps to streamline permitting processes and rather than the street would benefit from that and then develop the industry. So um, you know the, I think the idea then that uh, when we talked about it and the pig was instead of having one large facility that receives and this is this is not source reduction system um, that receives all of the construction that should be ready for diversion, having it in satellite locations and diverting it from there in smaller parties and bringing everything into one location with a small thing because it's going to have small mix of those, bringing those small mix of those from satellite locations. And then put the light materials together, recycle those like against concrete or scrap metals or, or things that need to be planned for. Them. Those are going to be that those are the chances that we're doing what they need to be. So I think that was that was the idea when we talked about it then. So, um, you know, maybe this not, might not be the, the right proposal period for it. I think there's another program that you have to So I think 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 that it's that it's something that it's, uh, so we can do it. I think the language to it, it's written as this this So it's like, who's going to So. So, what was that, Emily? I was just verifying you could hear us in the mic. It's not. Computer. It's not great. It's a little bit. For some reason, it got a little harder to hear. Um, I, I'm hoping I heard most of it. Are you still wanting to include this in some fashion or not? Well, I'll let the other members decide if they want to let that go forward. If if. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll maybe refuse myself to make it. So I'll, I'll come up on the fence. Like, if this is because the, the, the language is assumed to be right, right? If the standard, who's going to establish it? And how would the city really do that? Does the city do it themselves? Or the city? Yeah, so is it, uh, go ahead, Nancy. I was just saying, would it be accurate to say? Establish areas where C and D materials can be stored or stockpiled before reuse. Is that get at the heart of what we're trying to do here, and or want to do? I think maybe 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 instead of establishing, um, I think I think that the the, the, uh, the uh, industry might want to set up like my stuff. I want to set up transfer stations, and maybe we could do it with. Uh, the other the, the recommendations like setting up organizations or meetings as far as the disposal of them to recommend that they use certified permitted transfer state or um, CMD recyclers to recycle that material before it gets landfill. So, you know, I think that, I think that it does mean a lot.
Um, okay. Well, we are we are getting pretty close to our time here, so I'm trying to just do a little process check of what we need to be doing. We're getting stuck on this one. Um, I think uh, we need. I could just make a motion to uh, to advance this this item uh, and noting that the biggest consideration is um, space for uh, storing and staging uh, reusable or recyclable construction and demolition material. Okay. Are you making that? that motion? All those in favor, please say aye and, and or raise your hand if you're online. So what was the motion? Put it in the chat. <laughs> the, the motion is to advance this, this item with the consideration that it's uh, the emphasis is on uh, space to store and uh, stage uh, reusable and recyclable construction. Yeah, I think I, I think it's a little one side, right? So I think we need both. We, we, we need both because we can reuse something. You know, but yeah, we are. Did was that a yes vote then or no? Uh, <laughs> no. Um, So this could be another one that you provide comment on the draft report. You know, maybe we need to think about this one a little bit more, but um, I think what we have are five votes, two in the room and three online. Is that accurate? I think it was. I'm not sure if there's a second, though. I've not lost track. <laughs> There was a second, yep. Okay. Wait, who seconded the motion? Do I, I remember? Nicole. Nicole seconded it. And oh, we have three online votes. We have Haley, Nicole, and Lene. That would be a total of five votes. Okay. Um, I don't know if you all are willing to stay longer or how we want to move forward because we only have seven minutes left. So um, I have a hard stop. You have a hard stop. OK. Anyone else? I would I would only have to I, I could probably go until 4.15. All right, I have a four o'clock. I think we need a slight change then, and I think that we could potentially do this in a way where we make a motion to consider all of the items that have more than five votes in the report, five or more votes in the report. That gives you an opportunity to see how they're written up and comment on them, and then we have the finalized versions put forth. If that sounds like an acceptable solution, then I encourage someone to make that motion. Guys, it's cool. so moved. Will that work? <laughs> How about How about I move that we vote for inclusion of oh. all of the considerations that got five or more initial votes okay. to be right. in? Yeah. All right, I'll uh, Quinn make a motion to uh, to uh, approve all the items that got five or more votes, uh, and that giving us the opportunity to comment on them uh, during the final draft period. Is, can I get a second? I did. Was that from Mike? Sorry, I'm not. I'm getting bad feedback, so I need. Alan seconded. 
Alan seconded, thank you. All members in favor of including all of the considerations that got five or more votes in the report to give the opportunity to comment on them further, please say aye in person or raise your hand online. Aye. Aye. How many votes in person? I didn't hear that, sorry. Three votes in person. Three votes in person and four online from Haley, Nicole, Lene, and Tina. Thank you all for your flexibility. So let's get back to the slides really quickly. We're almost there. Um, we just need to talk about scheduling. Uh, again, I think you all know where we are. We're at meeting four. We are now going to try to take all of the feedback. Luckily, we have a great recording and some notes. We're going to be drafting a report. You will get the report and have an opportunity to provide your comments prior to meeting five, which we still need to also schedule. And then we will finalize the report after that. So, um, I just want to thank all of you very much. This is a very long meeting. You did a great job, a lot of material that we covered. There's going to be more information coming about when meeting five is and some timelines for the report. Um, but thanks again for all of your feedback and your participation, and I hope you have a really good evening. So with that, I'd like to adjourn the meeting at 3.56 p.m. And thanks again. Great to see you all. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you. Eunice, would you stop the recording, please?